Hey, hey, baby dolls, welcome back to you. If you notice, I am wearing a good vibes jumper for you. I love it and appreciate you. I want to show you something. I found this person on Twitter Roonies. His name is Delicious Strawberry. Now, <laughs> it's actually his real name, DS. Okay, now, he went through, he bought a lot of Soilana coins. And I want you to know, if you take a bite of this cherry, this is most likely what's going to happen to you if you're lucky, okay? You play around, you throw some coins, money and coins in. Okay, just from what I've seen, I've seen some people, for example, tell me they haven't had a winner in 20 meme coins in a row. And someone else says, wow, I'm winning like one in every four coins. And then you ask questions, you go, okay, the guy who's winning one in every four coins, what is he doing? He's getting out after a two or three X. So he's just getting in and whatever. And look, that's fine, friends, while the mania is here, but it's very short-lived. Uh, it's really short-lived. It's like days, week. It's end of times, basically. And by the time you actually get confident in it, it's probably the end of it. So you can't do too much size anyway. Now, the person who hasn't won in 20, 20 occasions, he's actually trying to do it right. He's trying to just buy everything, hoping something gives him the 100X but they all go like two, three, four, and then just come back down, okay, if he's lucky that they're a winner. So this is somebody who's been playing around, Mr. DS, right? Look at this. He goes, update on my meme positions. Three days in this redacted season. He goes, he has his coin here. Chonky is doing well. I'm in profit, 4X. Good. Peep, I'm down 30%. RBT, I'm down 10%. DGEN trades with around $200. This one, break even. This one. The golden egg, I'm up 8x. This one rugged, I'm down 80%. Gonna close this. This is down 30%. This is down 40%. This is down 66%. Okay, you just see the, the randomness. You're like, wow, there was an 8x winner in there. I mean, I hope that's the one that ends up going like another 30x for him from that point and gives him 250x, but the chances of that are very low. You could just tell, friends. See, even if we are on the right strategy, the problem is the timing. Because you can gather this information by doing your own research. I'm going to just tell it for you right now. The mania comes when Bitcoin has broken the all-time high. That's actually mania. That's when people just go, get me in, get me in, because they want to see Bitcoin do monthly candle closes through that all-time high. Problem is everyone knows about it now, and everybody is starting with his meme coin poopery. You know, back in 2019, there was none of this. There was no meme coin poopery. There was none of these EVM, let's bridge onto chain. There was none of these liquidity rails set up. There wasn't as much market maturity. And this is a bad thing, right? Because there wasn't, okay, so it's bad that everyone knows about it now. Everyone knows, okay, you got a deck screener, you pull up the coin, okay, it's starting to get harder and harder. And you're starting to see the edge diminishing away. That's why you're not only going to get diminishing gains, but the competition is more fierce, there's more trading bots, all these things coming. But this is a sign that the industry is not going away. But I mean, you already know it by now, friends. We're so convicted. Of course, the industry's not going away. The industry's here to stay for sure. But at the end of the day, you you, can, ugh, you don't want to hear that. You want the opinions out there to say, well, crypto, crypto's never coming back ever. You want them to be like that because you know you, when you buy, you're competing with nobody. But when people are saying like, yeah, the industry's going to be around, there's going to be memes and bull market, that's tough, man. That's tough. That means all of these people are going to be eating at your low-hanging fruit. So that's why we've got to use every edge we can get. Now, if you don't know, friends, recently, so I've got some more DCA funds that were able to come in and I've just slapped it in Pulse and PulseX. There are other coins could have slapped it in, but I just don't. I just, ugh, there's just too many, man. Just, there's just too many, friends. How, how do you choose? Split it between 10 or 20? I don't know. Like, it's just... You're going to feel a bit silly if a new season comes in two, three months. Like, you, I don't want to provide a, a framework here because it's not it's not really conducive to the right way that's going to make you win. But if you wanted to and you had all the time, all you'd have to do is sit here 8 to 14 hours a day and whenever something gets high volume, you could go start doing on-chain trading on it, trying to scalp around, but... You know how that's going to end you up. I know people risk management, not good. People go on tilt, not good. You're going to miss out. You're just going to probably end up just in a worse place than somebody who just does the buy and hold. Not even probably, almost guaranteed for 98% of people, that's what it's going to be like. So remember, we spoke about edge before. Now, looking at edge, this is something I want to show you where 
it's interesting because the pulse to pulse x ratio, you're just looking at the ratio between, okay, it's actually pulse x versus pulse. You can see here just ranging around. Now, it's actually in the middle zone. I know this looks like it's a buy zone, but this ratio of 0 0.27, where one pulse x is about 27% of pulse price, I would not consider that like super duper cheap. I wouldn't. Personally, if it went down to these numbers like down here, like it really capitulated down, okay, sure. But, you know, so here's the thing. You can see this range. You're like, okay, it's not in a super cheap or a super expensive zone. It's in the middle. What does that actually mean? All that means is if I have DCA bullets in like I did, I don't choose between one or the other because they're both equally cheap. They're both basically the same range. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. And as well, this is the thing, right? If you put in half your bullets to each one, if the ratio goes down here, guess what? You can deploy your pulse. You're actually buying pulse X and you'll be able to pick that up here. But if you just went, say, 100% pulse X here and then the ratio drops down, well, guess what? You have no pulse to deploy because you spent all your bullets here to do all of it, okay? If this confuses you, just remember you're playing around ratios. At the end of the day, the ratio is in, in, between, in between, so I don't have any conviction either way, okay? So for example, if you're looking at, say, the hex versus ETH ratio, it's the same thing. It's just that you know that's super, 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 super low. So if you had, for example, let's say somebody had like 10 grand coming in, they're like, oh, do I buy hex? Or do I buy Ethereum? You know, obviously not financial advice, but because the ratio is so low, you think, okay, well, I'm kind of hoping that, you know, hex versus ETH is going to go up from here. So you'd it'd be like obviously a no-brainer if somebody believed in it, right? They just allocate fully to hex, you know. But of course, you know, people did that before and last year, and then dropped another fifty percent. So if you had a portfolio a year ago where you put half hex, half Ethereum, and it, hex kept dropping down. You can get that ETH and now you can deploy more. So you've protected yourself, okay? But that's the scenario if it went down. What if it went up 300%, which is a 4X? You know, then you're going to be like kicking yourself. You're like, oh man, I should have deployed that ETH. So there really is no win-win situation when it comes here. You just have to accept in yourself. You're never going to get it fully 100% right. And you're just hoping at the end of the day, you can ride some sort of trend. This is long-term trend. We know the bullish undertone for crypto, yada, yada. Also, I thought I'd be kind for you and play some nice, gentle angel music, friends, because you definitely do deserve it. All right, now, since the pulse x to pulse ratio is still in the middle of the zone, I want you to like also appreciate that when it comes to looking at you know finding edges and trying to look at things in the markets, when you look at ratios, what you're doing is you're trying to see, okay, can I maximize my bang for my buck? Because I'm putting my putting my dollars in. Okay, now. You do need to do this because what if we don't get the world where everybody just gets a 100x? What if we don't get that world? If we don't get that world, then you're really going to be looking at that person who's like, hmm, I looked at these ratios. I was able to get like, you know, a 2x multiplier here. And then I looked at another ratio. And then let's say next, end of next year, something plays out. You get like another plus 50% multiplier. By the way, that goes a long way. I said 2x and I said plus 50%. But imagine someone who picks the wrong things, not wrong, but the, the slower stuff, and they get a 10x, all right? But instead, you were able to get a 2x multiplier on the 10. Now you have 20. And then let's say you get another ratio done later on, and then you get another 50%. Now you have 45x. Compare that difference, by the way, from 10x to like 20 to 45x. Just think about that. That's a huge difference if you get this right. But obviously, you're bunny hopping here through multiple scenarios. Let's just use a scenario where someone gets like, you know, a 2.5x or 1. That's still huge. Someone gets a 10x and someone gets a 25x. A big, big, big difference can be made in your returns at the end of the day. But of course, you still have to be right about it. Also, I want to make a comment as well, friends, about tilting. So ugh, this is another thing. Look. And I know what the crowd wants. You know what the crowd wants. Everyone wants to be told, give me the coin that's going to go up, up only, that's going to print monthly green candles, straight line. I don't want to go through any pain, depression, nothing. I just want to go up only. Where's all the action? We all want to be told that. Of course we do. But I'm not in the business of just dealing dopamine, okay? I'm here to actually win, okay? It's just like feeding your vegetables, friends. Like, if you want to lose weight and train the gym and get stronger, 
No, I'm, it doesn't matter. I'm not giving you donuts every day. Okay, I'm not feeding you McDonald's every morning and pancakes and syrup, even though they're gummy. You're getting your block broccoli, you're getting your chicken breasts, you're getting your protein shake. That's it. You can't be drinking Coca-Cola every day and having like 40 teaspoons of sugar. You just can't. That's what's happening to your mind when you're getting fed. Like, hot, new narrative. Oh, my gosh. Did you see this? That's what's what happened to your brain. When you're getting put leverage trading in front of your face, that's what's happening. Oh, buy the hot new meme coin. Okay. Unfortunately, though, sometimes you've got to indulge to see is there opportunity. So you might have to bridge around the different chains. You have to play around. But, you know, at the end of the day, how is it all going to end up? Okay. You really do. So people are on tilt. And it's very apparent in the Hex community as well. So what I've seen is just for the Hex clones, right? So <clears throat> there are some people like really, really trapped. So there's nothing wrong with the coins themselves. Friends, it's all the same game, okay? It's just it's just musical chairs. It's just musical chairs. It's, it's everybody telling each other, we're going to be around here forever. And then you have to believe. It, okay, now here's the thing. Every coin's like that, of course. Okay, Hex, Pulse Chain, Pulse X, price is ravaged. Chaining's price got ravaged. Everyone says, well, we're just going to be here forever. Yes, okay, we all say that. No one wants to be the next XRP. We're here just, <laughs> you're not gaining on Bitcoin for 10 years. But you just got to think about your probability of success when it comes to, say, I'm playing participating in a Hex clone, you know, that's coming as a derivative of a derivative in an altcoin and all these. And you look around, you're like, hmm, are these people going to be around if someone else makes a different code? Are these people going to be around if someone else makes a bit of a sweetener? or comes and just try something new in six months. Because the people participating with you, they're part of the locust crowd on average. Not all of them, but just on average. So you got to think, how much is that worth to you? Now, you can have your opinion about it. It doesn't really matter. You can participate if you want. Look, lottery, lottery tickets coming on. It, it's fine. There's going to be more bull market stuff coming. But I've seen on-chain, seeing stories, hearing stories, feeling stories, People are tilting, all right? So you, um, you're going to just learn about what's going on here so you don't do it. But it's one thing for me to tell you not to do it. It's another thing. It's, I'm not joking. Most of you should just be staking. Just do a 30-day rolling stake or like 90 days just so you can't harm yourself, okay? So traders get on tilt, okay? This is a cute peppy with the witch hat. All right, look at this. So <clears throat> I don't want to be providing bids for these people to bail out. So a lot of people, I've been, we've been watching them. They've taken, taken some pretty bad trades. So when it comes to Pulse Chain, Pulse X, and Hex, they have bought tops, sold bottoms, tried to trade stuff. Their positions are dwindling, you know. If only you had a friend out here, can't find him, who made videos about fondling your soap in the shower. That's effectively what they've been doing, okay. And these people, unfortunately, it's slipping away, man. They're looking for that one winner. Now, people do desperate things when they're desperate, and you can tell what's been happening, okay? So, once again, it's okay to participate in lottery coins, but I can just tell some people, it's very obvious, they've been joining maybe Hex clones or other communities. And now that they're in, they're really trying to start a movement. They're like telling everybody else, hey, come join with me. Okay, and <clears throat> don't forget, all these coins... The code's nothing special, friends. They do the same thing, okay? They hand out real yield. So you buy the coin, you burn it up. Okay, here you get the Ethereum out, but it's all the same game. It's musical chairs. You always need more people coming out behind you, all right? That's why you really... I've, I've laid all the fundamental, the, the blueprint here for you. Is there a cult, strong community that is there when you take away the yield? Are they still there? Now, I'm not saying it has to be nice or pretty or easy. I'm just saying, is it there? On average, if you have weak hands all around you who've come in for this ETH yield and then it starts to slow down, it becomes a reflexive thing on the downside. You get to see, friends. Just everyone starts pulling out. Everyone starts dumping and then it's gone. And once that basically just downward spiral happens, it's the same thing. Then everybody gets ravaged once again. And everyone realizes, oh, golly gee, I guess I guess it was fluff the whole time, as everybody said. But you're going to have to figure out that, that out for yourself, okay? That's why it's okay to play with these lotteries. you just you got to think for yourself how much do you want to be allocating to it. But that's why personally with me in these lotteries, instead of going even medium size, I don't want to. And I don't care if I miss stuff. It's just because, look, 
I know from trading and offices and stuff, when you when you can hear rumors, someone's offside, someone's desperate, you don't want to be providing them exit liquidity at all. Because on average, it means it's like a proxy for people around them also desperate. You want to be getting in when they vomit out their position. Slap, 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 or they want to get out. When they just want to panic and get, that's when you want to get in. But you might even find in such a scenario, it might be correlated with Bitcoin tanking and it might be next year. And you might say, Ugh, you know what? I kind of don't want that coin anymore. I'm just going to wait for something new. You know, th That's usually what happens. And then if you don't really want that coin because something new is going to come along where you realize, oh my gosh, I'm not really with a strong community, am I? You know, so think about it. You could always use Hex and Pulse Chain as examples. There's a Hex conference. There's a Pulse Chain conference. There's 140 content creators. Okay, these things being pushed. And guess what? All the things that everybody says is embarrassing, you got minus 99% price drop and all this yield and stuff going on, people are still there. So they're actually strengths now. But it's, it's scary because you've got to sit through it. You don't know, are you going to survive through that? That's why obviously most coins don't. Okay, so I've given you the, the blueprint and the framework. When it comes to any coin, if you can sniff, there's desperate people in that coin, do not put your money in at all. Don't even think about it. I'm telling you, it never ever works out. It never works out. You just, you're gonna be, you know, the bids are just gonna be slammed every time. You'll never, it's like a chain around your neck. It's almost like I told you, if I had this magical example, imagine you were a duck and you controlled 600 million sacrifice funds. Many people, bless their hearts, don't understand really how markets and the mechanics works. Most of them will say, well, why don't we just use the sacrifice funds to just buy up the coin and they'll pump it? No, it's because once you, if you do that, all the weak hands, they just start getting out. Bang, bang, bang. They just start getting out. They just chew it up. Every single person gets out. Fastest finger first. You don't want that to happen. You want non-believers to get out. Okay, this is theoretical. You want non-believers to get out and you want them to get out for the lowest price possible. So when they do get back in, they're absolutely ravaged. And if they do decide to get in, they'll probably never sell ever again. That's what you really want, okay? But at the end of the day, you know, you got to figure out who's desperate, how desperate are they? It's not just a situation when it comes to leverage, but you just really got to be careful because you're going to need your stamina, okay? You don't want to be going around throwing all your money out, oh, hex clone number 57, when maybe the whole new season has nothing to do with pulse chain in, in any way. You know what I mean? There could be like new seasons out there. It could be like new chains, new incentives, gaming, NFT, whatever it is. You just got to be ready, ready for whatever comes. Make sure you like, subscribe, belly button all. Don't forget to tell mom and dad you love them. Catch you soon.